I joined the University of Sydney as a, as a post-grad last year, so I'm just finishing um, the, the end of the sort of sec second year, first semester. Um, it's early days for me because I am doing my doctorate part-time, um, having to you know, uh, juggle all the other aspects of my career part-time was really appealing to me and it's been extremely good for me in that the university has been very understanding about my schedule. Well, I'm with the Gender and Cultural Studies Department. And the people that they have on board there are absolutely, you know, incredible. They're some of the, the greatest minds in the country, in my view, and certainly in this area and on, the, on these topics. Um, and as someone who has increasingly been um, in the public eye in terms of the discussion of the experiences of women and girls, I felt it was extremely important to get my foundations. Um, and, and I take that the responsibility quite seriously. Um, I don't want to just enter a debate about feminism and about gender and where we're at in our culture in terms of women and girls and um, and that, that bigger discussion without having really good foundations. Because I think too often we do have this discussion without, uh, without having our foundations in, in statistics and historical context and theory. So um, for me it was extremely important to be doing a doctorate of social sciences with the gender and cultural studies department and to, um, you know, to learn more and to have those foundations before I got more um, involved in this sort of public conversation. I'm, I'm very lucky to have Elspeth Proben as uh, my supervisor as well as Megan Morris as my other supervisor. I mean, they're really, um, I could not have asked for more. Uh, so the university has been incredibly supportive and both of my supervisors have been very inspiring to me and have taught me a lot already. Uh, just being in my second year with them, um, I've already learned a great deal. And they've been very supportive of this book, The Fictional Woman, you know, um, in terms of giving me feedback and, and giving me a sense of, of you know, how, how my argument is going and what their thoughts are on it. Well, The Fictional Woman is my first uh, book of non-fiction, uh, despite the title. It is a book that actually explores um, the way we fictionalize women and girls. Of course we fictionalize men and boys as well, but there's a particularly, in my view, problematic set of archetypes we use um, to, to portray and represent women and girls, particularly in popular culture. You know, the fact that we, we can identify immediately public figures who have been stuck into one of these boxes. You know, Miley Cyrus, obviously, she went from virgin to whore. Um, and we all watched that and, and decided to be kind of um, it, that it was scandalous and we're all so fascinated, like look at it, look at it, and we're all so fascinated and watching while moralizing about her, you know, kind of loving to hate this transition. Um, and of course we have figures like Hillary Clinton, so when we have a woman who is an authority figure and has knowledge and power, she's very frequently put into the witch um, archetype. We, we, we see her through the media in terms of this perspective, this lens of the witch, you know, we see her through that lens. And we don't have a kind of historical context for positive portrayals of older knowledgeable women in the same way that we do with older knowledgeable men who have been the wise men for, for centuries. You know, that archetype is very, uh, very firm and fixed in our mind. And with women, it's, it's really new territory. And we keep sliding back to these portrayals that come from fairy tales of the Middle Ages. Snow White, Cinderella, you know, we have, we have these archetypes kind of um, firmly entrenched and it's my belief that we can do better. We need a, a, a better range of storytellers. We need a more democratic, if you will, uh, series of voices who can speak, uh, speak to us and do our storytelling and, and, we, and, and, and we need to tell our own stories as well. So with The Fictional Woman, it's kind of my call to arms, if you will, to say, let's tell our stories. Um, let's stop just remaking these old stories um, that have been around for centuries that have problematic archetypal portrayals of women. Let's, let's start really entering the conversation and having a more reasoned discussion. And uh, let's get some new thinkers and, and voices into the mix.